These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. Uh, there's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. In these videos, uh, I'm going to be referring to some handouts and other documents that I've prepared uh, that summarize some of the material that we'll be talking about uh, in the videos. Um, and uh, I'm going to probably uh, be referring to those handouts quite a bit. Uh, you'll be able to follow along with the videos much better if you actually print those documents out and have them in front of you while you're watching the videos. You can obtain the handouts and other documents, again, at my website. Uh, again, here is the address of my website, and the easiest way to get there is just to click the link in the info box. So you are asking about the stereochemistry for uh, E2. That's actually a little complicated. Now, first of all, that's something that's covered pretty well in the second language book. So, um, I don't know if you read that section uh, in there. Now, um, let's see what we've got. So, uh, so uh, here we have D for deuterium again, an isotope of hydrogen. Here's an ethyl group, and here's a methyl group. Um, so we could have an SN2, uh, we could have an E1, or a, uh, well, let's see. I guess uh, I actually want to make this an E2. So now we could do E1 or E2. So I'm going to put another methyl group up uh, here. All right, so. Okay, so um, we need to know uh, what the, the stereochemical uh, outcome is of E2 and E1. So let's say maybe we can start with E1. So will E1 give us uh, two stereoisomers or just one stereoisomer? Do you guys know? Mm -hmm. two? two? Yeah, yeah two. two. And how about E2? One. 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 You can actually, we talked about how when you attack something tetrahedral, that gives you one product, right? And when you attack something trigonoplanar, that gives you two products. So that would fit into this pattern over here. Uh, in E1, the base is attacking a carbocation, which is trigonal planar, so that gives us a maximum of two products. Uh, but in E2, the base is attacking um, uh, an atom with a tetrahedral alpha carbon, so that would give us two products. So we already saw previously that um, when you uh, attack something tetrahedral, you get a maximum of two stereoisomeric products. Stereoisomer products, but if you attack something trigonal planar, that gives you a maximum I reversed let's try again. Maximum of two. Stereoisomers. All right, so I misspoke a second ago. What I should have said is that when you attack something tetrahedral, that gives you a maximum of one stereoisomer product. But if you attack something trigonal planar, that gives you a maximum of two stereoisomer products. Okay, so E2, you have a tetrahedral alpha carbon, so that gives you the one stereoisomer. But E1, the base is attacking a compound with a trigonal planar carbocation uh, alpha carbon, so that would give you a maximum of two. Okay, so to start with E1, that's going to give us both cis and trans, because it's going to give us two products, right? All right, 
And which of those would be the major product? Did both Maybe racemic mixture. Oh, all oh, right. Now, SN1 is racemic, but E1 is not racemic. Um, and we can kind of figure out which, which way it is. Is this cis or trans? Trans. Yeah. And this one would be cis. By the way, this is not the same compound as this one up here. I just made up a, a, a simple example here. Which of these looks happier? Trans. trans. Because, less steric yeah, less steric hindrance. With the cis, the two substituents are kind of closer to each other and can get in each other's way. Uh, so trans uh, would be better over here. Um, so actually, the major product tends to be trans. Um, however, you still get a lot of cis, so you shouldn't ignore the cis. So if um, they told us to draw the major product? Then you would ignore the cis. So if they say, draw all possible products, then you would draw both the cis and the trans. But if they just say, draw the major product, then you would draw the trans. By the way, remember if they say to draw, uh, yeah, okay. And this is for the elimination. Remember that if there's an E1 reaction happening, there could be an SN1 happening at the same time. Yeah, All right, so we'll get to that in a second. All right, so that's the, the, uh, the lineup for E1. Um, what, did, what did we decide again when um, we have SN1 or SN2 and then you have, like, let's say the BR is the leaving group. Did we decide that when we um, draw the major products, we include the BR minus? Yeah, now when I say major, major doesn't mean important. Major means um, the, the products that there's a lot of. Right. So, so, so you, for example, sometimes you get, say, 90% of one thing and only 10% of another thing. So, uh, yeah, generally speaking, you would, uh, you would generally include the leaving. Well, I guess it depends on the instructor. The best thing is to look at your I answer key. Look okay. at the answer key and see what uh, you're doing in the answer key. Yeah, they never do. Yeah, they never yeah. do. Yeah, so you should look at the answer key and see what the answer key is doing to see what your instructor wants. I certainly, you certainly wouldn't lose points for putting uh, for drawing the leaving group. You certainly would, certainly wouldn't lose points for drawing the leaving group unless, yeah, unless he says draw the organic products. If he says draw the organic products, you should only draw things with carbons because that's what organic means. But unless he says draw the organic products, you certainly wouldn't lose points for showing the leaving group as well. So in a way, that's it's kind of better because it shows that you really understand the reaction. But maybe the best thing is to stick to what the answer key is doing. Okay. okay. So anyway, um, we've discussed uh, the stereochemistry for E1. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, um, how many products will we get from E2? One. Yeah, we're going to get one product. And how do you decide whether it's cis or trans? Mm -hmm. Do you see where it's attacking? That's where you use the anti periplanar transition state. That's, that's, something, we did, yeah. that's something you've seen before. OK, so that was covered in a. Uh, a chapter in the second language book. I don't know if you guys had a chance to read that. Uh, now, um, I just I was meeting with some other uh, OCHEM students right before you guys, and the second language book didn't cut it for them either. So we actually spent uh, an hour and a half going over anti periplanar and tonight I'm going to put it on YouTube, and then you can watch it. So rather than us spending an hour and a half going over it, you can just watch that on YouTube. I think we pretty much covered it. But that can easily swallow up the whole session. It's actually, that, it's not that easy. Okay. So um, today or tomorrow, I'll, uh, when, when's your test? Thursday. Yeah, well, before Thursday, I'll, I'll have that up there. Um, hopefully okay. today or tomorrow, uh, I'll, I'll put that up there. Uh, that's definitely worth knowing, uh, but actually it's not that easy to explain. It takes a while to really, uh, to really lay it out. Okay, so um, do you guys have your handouts with you? Yeah. Yeah, so let's take a look at uh, page one of the handout. So what we just went over, we're looking at page one of the handout. All of you have a copy? Mm -hmm. Page one of the handout, and we were looking at stereochemistry. Um, so we just talked about the E2 and the E1 stereochemistry. So notice that E2, the cis and trans, is determined by the anti periplanar transition state. And I just said it actually takes about an hour to explain how that works, so okay. you'll see that on the video. Then in the right hand column, E1, you get a mixture of both cis and trans um, isomers. Um, okay. uh, and the trans is a little more stable, so that would be the, the major product. Okay. Um, so that's the stereochemistry for E1 and E2, and hopefully you guys are already comfortable with the stereochemistry for SN2 and SN1. Uh, I think we talked about that a little last time anyway.